Everything that you think you know about healthy eating. My next guest, best-selling author and medical professor, Tim Spector, has just released his new book, Food for Life, which focuses on the importance of gut health. And why? Well, we actually need to change our ideas around eating well. So gut health, it gets thrown around a lot. What does that actually mean and why is it so important? Well, what it means is that the state of your gut is driven by the number of good microbes in there. Right. And microbes are these microscopic organisms, bacteria, fungi, other stuff. There builds this community in your gut that only recently we've discovered are like mini pharmacies. They're converting what you eat into other chemicals that are really key for spreading those uh, super chemicals, uh, helping your immune system, right. helping boost your, uh, your, your mood, energy, appetite, controlling your weight, and fighting diseases. Wow, it's like another bee brain. It down is there. like a mini brain down there, exactly. <laughs> Most people don't think of their immune system as in their gut, but that's really where it all is. It's all there. It's yes. all it's all there. So what kind of things should we be eating? Is it the usual things that we know that we should eat that everybody tells us are very, very good for us? Is it that easy? Is it that simple? Um, it's mm. slightly <laughs> like that, but but I think once you understand that you need to eat for your gut microbes, it yeah. changes the way you think about food. Okay. So the idea is we, you want to be eating 30 different plants a week if you right. can. So okay. it's not just about eating the same kale salad every day. You should change it. It's diversity, oh, okay. it's variety. It's, it's trying to get all of these things. And people forget what plants are because it's not just uh, different types of cabbage, it's nuts, it's different seeds, it's different berries. Um, it's things like uh, even coffee mm. is a plant. Right. And so, and we know that's actually healthy for you. If you're drinking coffee, it's got fibre and other stuff in it. Um, dark chocolate is a plant. Hurrah. And so, there, you know, it's changing our mind about yeah. what plants are and realising it's the diversity that's important. Um, you also got to have fermented foods in there. Um, not, you know, not just uh, uh, cheap, low-fat yoghurts, but good stuff and things like fermented milk, kefir, sauerkrauts and right. things like this. Oh. Um, and it's also um, picking foods that are high in colours, eating the rainbow. Well, this is all really colourful. Yeah, like this is great because this tells you that in this plant there's, there's chemicals that make it red that are actually contain defence chemicals that are good for your immune system and your microbes. Right. Okay. So that's why colours in bold. Going beige is really bad, OK? So, and then, right. And then cutting out as much as possible ultra-processed foods, which contain nasty chemicals and very little fibre, and, and finally, giving your gut a break. So not just what you eat, but how you eat. So rather than snacking all the time, give yourself 14 hours overnight so your gut can rest and recuperate oh, really? is really important. This is a new type of intermittent fasting. Right, so, so eat your, your, your dinner at night, your tea, as I would call it, and <laughs> calls it different things. So have that a wee bit earlier and then don't have... Don't you know... snack afterwards. Don't have your sandwiches right. and cake in front of the mm. telly. Um, try and give yourself a, your gut a rest. Oh, OK, I never and, thought about that. And about delay maybe your breakfast in the morning, you know, so you're not always eating, which is stressing your body. And, uh, you know, have good meals, yeah. but have them in a slightly more concentrated time like we used to have. Yeah, exactly. Before food companies told us to eat all these snacks and Indeed. everything else. And then, of course, all those, like, you know, with, as you said, things that are pre-prepared and all of that, they're full of stuff that makes you hungry. Exactly. So they? studies have shown that if you compare ultra-processed food with an equivalent identical calorie stuff, that the ultra-processed food will make you overeat by about 20%. Wow, So gosh. it's really important that we, we see that it's not about calories. And, and you know, no. I've got very strong views about calorie counting. I don't, I think th I don't think it is, do it is rubbish. Yes. 99% of people cannot sustain any weight loss mm. just by calorie counting. We've got to start thinking about the real quality of food. Exactly. It's and looking at it from a microbe's point of view, it makes it easy to mm. think about what's... You know, what's good for you and the choices we make every day are for our food are the most important things we can do for our health yep. as well as the planet. No, absolutely. Now, look, you've got lettuce there and brown bread. Now, I would have thought that that's pretty good to eat. You know, that's, that looks very healthy, but no. No, I mean, 
Iceberg lettuce is a complete waste of time. Is it? Um, there's no nutrients in it at all. Right. It, you know, it may last longer than our Prime Minister's, but uh, that's, about <laughs> it. that's about all it does. Whereas if you picked a different lettuce with red colours and, and loose right. leaves, that has a thousand times more nutrients right, in it. Right, so that is... And, and if you just pick a, a brown bread without really checking its fibre content, it's just going to be pure sugar and it's not going to help you. So many of the stuff we, we're fooled by, right. just because it's got some healthy label on it, like mm. low calories, low fat, low sugar, it, we should be ignoring those and, and thinking about what is the, the quality of the food and how good is it yeah. for our gut health and our microbes. And if we think like that, we can, we can really all be much healthier sustainably. Yeah. It's not about a short-term fix. It's exactly. about long-term. It's about getting a plan that works for life and that's science-based and that, that works properly for you. You need to come back because, um, I mean, this book is going to be like... People will be referring to this. You know, it's one of those books, have it beside your bed and, and, and just, you know, dip in and out all the time because I know you've got so much to talk about. We've got a massive obesity problem in this country and we need to do something about it, and especially now. Thank you for the moment, Tim. Uh, the, new, the book Food for Life, The New Science of Eating Well is out now. Lots of surprises and full of information.